found us. We're on the dock again. We're going to have a great time today. We've already had a great time starting off this series. I'm Pastor Troy here on the dock.org. You can find us there and you can get a new one every Tuesday and Thursday. And we're all about, guess what? Conversations. We're going to have one today that'll propel your faith out of the shallows and you're going to get much deeper in your walk with the Lord today. We hope so. And then we got these, all these big platforms. You can come find us on YouTube, Spotify, iTunes, Google Play, Facebook, Roku, Rumble, and Sermonet. And check us out on our five social media sites. We'd love to hear from you and give a little chat and link us in and let's talk about what's going on. Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, Telegram, and Getter. We hope to have them as well as one of our video partners real soon. And check that out. You can hit, when you find us on any of these, hit subscribe, like, hit notify. Make sure you get three or four different ones just in case somebody just, we do, you know, sometimes you just disappear. You need to be on there. And then we'd love to have you as a Patreon partner or sponsor. We have four partner tiers, three sponsor links, uh, three sponsor uh, levels. Go check those out at our Patreon site. Download the app or you can link there through our website. Go to onthedoc.org. We have a link to Patreon there. Or you can download the app and look up onthedoc.org and you'll find us there. We can also email us at info at on the doc.org if you want to talk to us about anything. We'd love to hear from you. And our executive producer, Donna Kranuski, would love to communicate with you and we'll help you with anything we can. So we're on the dock again here and uh, we're, we got got my team in the studio here. As always, my partner to my right is Mother Beth. She's in the house, Mother Beth. Hi, honey. There you go. She's doing good. She spilt stuff in the previous episode. We had to do cleanup on aisle three. Are you, do you have your stuff together this time? We're dry now. We're dry. Are you dry now? Well, across the table is Ben. He, he took the whole thing in his lap, and uh, he just kind of pulled the like water off the table. He built his table, so he was concerned about the table, so he sacrificed his lap for the cottonwood You, you know what, though? Table. I was really impressed with how well it repelled the fluid. Yeah, I know, I know, I know. No You're problem. talking about putting another level on it, too. It'll even be better. It just beats right up there. So uh, we got Ben here at the table. He's my partner in this for the whole worship leader series we got in here we got Le lucas winkler i got his i got his graphic up this time lucas winkler techno wizard our executive director today he is just running the show doing a good job back there he's staying awake having a great time and uh, he's back he can shout out anytime he wants to and get, get in on the show but we're in another good episode we're in actually our, our super series season two opener for on the dock our worship leaders of southern Illinois. we're going to be we're featuring the series off and on throughout so it's going to be scattered all through our season two but uh we're in one of those early parts of it we just go back and watch part one of this featuring dustin griffith griffith and i gotta tell you part seven was good go find it go listen to it just just fill yourself with it but we're going to get into the second part of our conversation with him today uh, it's a, it's in a part eight of the whole series and again we'll be breaking these up check out this incredible mug of his man that looks good i mean i mean he looks <laughs> tough there i mean tough 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 he's a tender dude man he loves the lord and great and we've got dustin with us dustin welcome again to on the dock Thank you so much for having me. Man, fantastic. He hails from West Monroe Apostolic Church. Terry yes. and Mona Griffith is the lead pastors there. Your dad? Yes. Your mom? Yeah, fantastic. Ten. You're on I staff. You're on staff there. Uh, your brother's on staff. Mm -hmm. Jordan's preaching some and plays a little drums, but he's preaching. Pre preaching more. Who, who, who preaches the most these days? Jordan preaching? Jordan. Jordan's, I, I, Jordan's yeah. family? Dad, Dad's been preaching more to get, you know, he, you know, with his health, he's. You let that young buck preaching to make you yeah. want to preach more. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah I know how it so, is. My son, Josh, is a preacher. He's tough to keep up with. I, right. I had, you know, he's tough. I mean, you got to, he preached a few weeks. I better get back up in there. He's going to knock me out of the saddle. You know, you know and I'm, I'm so, hey, nothing can be proud of my son. I just preach. Yeah. To the, I know how, pr I know your dad's told me how proud he is of both you guys mm -hmm. and, and the expectations he has and what he hopes for you guys is so great. And yeah. he's pulled me aside several times and just said, you know, anything you can do to connect Jordan into the pastoral community, help me with that. And mm -hmm. gosh, Jordan was my co-partner last year with family fun day. He's a yeah. great leader and great, great man of God as well. And uh, so good, your whole family, just what, what a credit you guys have been doing these cedar sessions together. I know Yeah. Ben, you guys been doing these. I think Jordan's been involved with those oh, as yeah. well. Yeah. Yeah. And those are going good. Check those out. And as we remember from the previous episode, you're married. Yes. You're married to a native of Heron. Yes. You found one in Heron. Found one you in found Heron. found one of Heron names. Uh, and Kaylee? Yes. And you've got a child. How, how old's your child now? She is. She just turned three, March Ooh, 25th. Three years old. Oh. And her name is Anna. Anna. Anya Marie. Anya. Anya Marie. Anya. Anya. How do you spell Anya? Is Anya different than Anya? A-N-Y-A. Okay, That's that, how we spell that, Anya. That would, help oh, okay. Anna, that would help me, Anya. Yeah. So you never told the story behind, behind her name. Yes. It's a really cool story, if you want to hear it. Yeah, I yeah, want to hear it. Tell us. So um, I'll try to do the quick version. We were in St. Louis um, going, really, it was kind of a trip. We just wanted to get away, but more than anything, we were like, we wanted to just discuss the future and, hey, are we going to have children? Are we going to, you know, like, is this something we want to do now? And um, 
And so we were walking around the Galleria Mall, and they had just opened up this new boutique store that that was playing Christian music, and had. So we were like, let's go in there and see what it's like. And the there was one girl working, and her name was Anya. And uh, so I had the two days before a, fr- a local friend of ours, uh, Jordan Murphy, um, had been talking about the importance of naming because you're speaking that name and what it means you're speaking it over them and how a lot of times kids will exude whatever their name is and um he was telling really there's a cool story behind that too but um that was important to me and so we the the girl was like can i help you and we were like yeah um actually it's i know this is funny but um your name we love your name and uh do you know what it means (laughs) you know and she was like She's like, no, you know, kind of thrown off. But we were like, I, I kind of got on my phone and I looked it up. And it meant one who brings joy from the Lord. Wow. And That's I was good. like, huh. And so we just kind of looked at each other and we were like, that that may be it. So fast forward, um, your son here was having those Thursday night meetings that he was having for a little bit. And we were here. And me and my wife, we, at this point, we you know, she was pregnant and... Uh, um we didn't we had just found out that it was going to be a girl and you hadn't thought about really the naming process yet maybe she did i hadn't but we were here and we were having just some marital you know financial and think you know issues and more arguing than we had had in a long time and it was just really a, a sad i guess a sad season of our life and um your your son started speaking some things over us and then Jared Gravat just felt something in his spirit. He walked up and he laid hands on my wife's belly and he started praying and he said, and again, we had not, we hadn't told our parents it was going to be a girl. We didn't know, or we just found out like the day before. And we, he laid hands on her belly and he said, this little girl is going to bring joy from the Lord mm. and he, and is going to bring peace and and where there's chaos and just sort of praying these things over us and we just like looked at each other like well that's it that's her name (laughs) but the the cool story with that long story longer but trying to keep it still (laughs) short um we have went back twice to the we went back to find it was my idea i was like i want to go back and find anya and tell her and uh we she wasn't there but her roommate was working there and we told her the story and she broke down crying and she said i just had a miscarriage and we said can we pray with you and we spent time in the gallery mall praying with her and we told it was like you know would you tell anya that we just thank her for you know i know it's weird but well she reached out that we reached out kind of kind of connected and then we went back and when we went back it was so cool that girl was there and she ran up to us. She, she remembered us. She goes, she goes, Anya's not here, but she grabbed all the other workers. She said, this is the couple. They Aww. prayed for me. She's like, I'm pregnant again and everything's Aww. good. And, and she goes, will you share them the story? And so we shared the story with them and they were just crying and, and, and they let me pray for all of them. Just like Aww. pray that God would that. bless Very them. Cool. And so even in before birth, she became a blessing to other people. And, all like to me i just i still like it's like my favorite story and so oh, i love it and that really happened cool. right in your sanctuary so that's really that's cool. So cool that's fantastic <laughs> that's amazing amazing stuff here I love uh, that. let's see here let's see where we get jump in here get into this deeper stuff are you all off there no no, 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 it's good. no it's a good story i, I love it's it it's a great story I, from the previous episode you mentioned we talked about the heart of worship i'm just going to kind of recap we, we, you said that when everything about me when we ask you what is the heart of worship it's when everything about me is destroyed and lifted up you know and lifted up before god basically um decreasing me so that he can increase and you mentioned that he is so amazing so great that that unless i completely empty myself if i even hold back 20 30 percent then it wouldn't be proper so complete emptying i thought that was just a powerful uh concept uh, that worship you said is restoring garden relationship. Yeah. It would be emptying ourselves of everything they took back. Yeah. You know, they shouldn't have. Um, and you, we talked about the process to help other people do that. You mentioned 
is that helping people just simply to love people first and then to pour yourself out in the process. Yeah. And knowing that, that, uh, as we empty ourselves, God's more incapable of filling us again. Yeah. And we use, I use an example from second Samuel. I wanted to quote the text cause I didn't know the text last episode. Second Samuel 23 is the story where David gets the water from his warriors and they fought in and got the special water for him and he pours it out because yeah. it meant so much. Mm. And you said the text that really kind of speaks to you is we looked it up Proverbs three, five and six. Yeah. One of those scripture verses that everybody learns in, in, in Sunday school that, that trust in the Lord, lean not on your own understanding, but in all your ways, acknowledge him and he will guide your paths. Yeah. You're saying you just got to lean in on that. And just, yeah. just basically your, your way of articulating that is acknowledging him is emptying yourself. Yeah. Is really not, not the word you use is empty, but the word you use is destroying. Yeah. Which I think is just prolific. Right. That's a beautiful word to lay yourself out. And, you know, in, in the Bible, they talk about people fall prostrate, prostrate mm-hmm. before the Lord. You lay yeah. out. And, and when you lay out prostrate before the Lord, you are defenseless. Mm-hmm. I mean, you, you're on your own, you know, yeah. you know, I, I think of that when you see brothers and sisters fall out on the Lord in a church and you, you've been at a church when the Holy ghost moves mm-hmm. and somebody's laid down in the Holy spirit, man, you see people come up with blankets to cover them yeah. because you are, you're, you're, you're literally almost, you're, you're almost vulnerable. Mm-hmm. People can, you know, the skirts on the ground, heads on the ground. Yeah. You know, I, I love the churches where they come up and would cover you Yeah, because you you're, you're, you're modesty you're, cloth. No, I like that. You yeah. don't see that anymore. Yeah. Used to be, no, they'd lay somebody out and you'd see somebody with the cloth. They mm-hmm. drag a cloth over them because you know, you don't know what's ruffled up and what's ruffled down, yeah. you know, like that. <laughs> and, and, and it, it, it just an example that you have completely you know, laid yourself out Yeah, in vulnerability. That's a beautiful yeah. illustration. I want to dig deeper into that, but we're going to kind of dig in a little bit of process. And, and I want to talk about your work and, and working with and as and working with the whoever's whether Jordan's leading or Terry's preaching or somebody else is preaching as you work with the lead pastor and creating a worship experience what goes into that with you how's that process work for you at West Monroe specifically in service yeah. yeah yeah how do you work to get to get to that moment Ben and I have a process Lucas and I and Ben have a process yeah. what what, is, what does it look like for you well you know it's kind of funny because being I think it's just because we're family our our process is a don't try this at home process. No one else should gleam anything from ours because we're, we always joke we're the most unpracticed, like unrehearsed church. Like we just don't have rehearsals. But like we don't, the, it's, it is so by the seat of our pants. That, and and it's, it's a downfall. It, it really is. It's your, it's your weak spot. Huh? Yeah. Um, I don't but, know anybody like that. Uh, but, yeah. <laughs> big, 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 big kid. I don't really know. Like why are we best friends? I don't know. Um, I don't but even no, know you. What, you know, I do try. So, you know, I, I like in a service, I do like to, you know, mechanically, I like to, I like to play. I, I kind of play behind everybody. And, um, you know, I, we've, we've gotten really good at reading cue. I, I, I'm really, I know kind of my dad's style. Like, you know, when he's getting up to preach, he'll, he'll give his scripture and he'll say something and then he'll pray. And I know like, in that moment, that's when I can kind of, well, once he's done praying, that's when I can get off and let him go. Things like that you learn over time of just working right. with someone. Um, but, you know, I, I, I thought we, we were talking, I was talking with someone recently about, like, the altar service specifically. I think, um, I, I, and if, if people do this, it, there's not, this is just a personal conviction of mine. But, um, you know, for me, it was something that I, I grew, dad always had, the one rule he had is that I was not supposed to leave the platform, me specifically, um, after I was done playing. And that that way, because he didn't want me walking down and then walking up when it was altar, making a scene. He wanted me to be available, you know, then. Because dad Uh, can sing a little bit, too, so you never know. Yeah. Yeah. And he just didn't like that distraction. So that was like the one rule. If I had a rule, that was the one rule I had. But the other thing that it was for me is that, like, I've always said the altar service is a, my job, I feel like in the altar service is to give you words when you, if you're somebody who's never come to church and you don't know how to pray, I want to give you some words to pray in response to the message. Mm. And then you can go from that into your own words and, and, and whatever you need to say. So I'm not just going to, if you, if someone's preaching about dying to yourself and keep the thing going. I'm not going to just sing a song that's just, you know, all about uh, healing, right. you know, like because I had it on my set list. I really like that song. So I don't look at it as a set list. I look at it like I'm very intentional, even to the point sometimes 
if I get a chance, I'll go to dad. Hey, what are you preaching about? My brother's really good about this. He'll call me be like, I'm preaching about this. These are some songs I was thinking about. Or like, he'll be like, just along this line. So you have more communication with your brother on what maybe theme right. focus where he's going. Whereas your dad, you, you might just barely know where he's going. Oh, yeah. Sorry. We, we, at all, me and my mom usually sit together and we'll look at each other. You'll see it. If you're ever watching, you'll see us look at each other. I'm watching next Sunday. Do you, do you, do you have a song? And she'll get out her list and we'll start looking. And that's literally, but the songs are, we try to theme them to the, me as a response. Because again, I just think, you know, it, when, if you're hearing the gospel for the first time and, or, and you're hearing a word that you, and you're like, I don't even know how, how to do this. I want to give you something that you can sing in response. That is a prayer. So you're freestyling a lot. A lot, a lot. That's a, that, no, no. But when you're in a fan, when you when you got your family there, that's easy to do. You feel each yeah, other. Yeah. You you connect with that. I I do that, and I've worked now long enough mm -hmm. with Ben and Lucas now. Yeah, and 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 different people. Even, even like my t the, the Kyle in our booth that runs my slides. <laughs> I mean, he's ahead of me Sunday freestyling. He had stuff up. That I was fixing to quote. I was fixing to say, "Give me this slide." And I look up, it's up. I'm like, "Oh, yeah." You know, I told Kyle <laughs> the other day. He was like, "He's like in the spirit ahead of me." Yeah. So he's like like one notch up. Mm -hmm. You know, it was just ridiculous. Right. You get a good team. Yeah. You do that so how often does your mom lead, lead over and go i have no idea i can't believe the man's preaching that right now i told him not to mess with that you know i get no, that there's yeah. there's not that but we do get a lot of i don't what what are you what, what are you gonna think? do what do you think do you ever do rock paper scissors no but or you get something more spiritual it, no it's not it's just usually it's like what do you think about this uh well like the funny thing is like what if you start with the should be like what if you start with the bridge of this song but the core and then the chorus of this song like the bridge of this works good with his message but the chorus doesn't the chorus to this does so we'll just we'll just like flow so, so you'll that. throw put a couple things together right. now how does the rest of your band figure that out how, how, do, uh, do you have telepathy I, are you aquaman i do have a talk back mic okay good um but if you ask my for those of you, those, those of you out there in the world that don't know what to talk back mic those are the mics on the stage that don't really go to the crowd right but people in their ears can hear it or and their things yeah. here so so on our on our platform you see Lucas with a mic Lucas doesn't sing yeah. he's talking back yeah 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 and so. and but I, I I feel so sorry we we just added a guitar player we we've not had a guitar player in years but we just had a guy start coming to our church and it, at first he asked he we were talking and he said something about, I said, what, how, what is your normal? Like, what are you used to like getting the music and stuff? And he told me like two weeks early. Oh and, gosh. And I just said, like, we used to try to do a week early and then people would cancel. And we have singers from like Kentucky that come up to sing. And so it's like, if they call us and we, it's, you're singing the solo to that song. Well, we, we got to pivot. So mom and I usually have songs done on Friday before Sunday. Well, of course you do. And, <laughs> And it's it's so bad, and so, so 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 when that guy's asking you the new the new guitar player, God rest his soul, God bless him, he, when he says to you, this, do you go, brother? That's a good thing we plan on doing that, but right before that, we're gonna have a deliverance service. Yes, yeah. <laughs> and you put the hands out yeah. there, brother. Be set free. Yeah, we're gonna stretch you. We're you're gonna, gonna str to we're stretched. gonna grow you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but I, I will say, if there's anything we we've always, if there's any kind of method to the madness, which I again, we don't seem to follow a method, but. Mom always says she tries to start the service very horizontal and very kind of that principle, loving people, getting people there, getting people focused, and then you work vertical um, in a way where, like, the song right before the message is, like, let's let's give them, again, giving words to say, give them an opportunity to repair their heart, to make it good ground and not stony ground and not you know, ground that's going to be scorched from the sun, but good ground to hear the seed of the word. And, um, and so that's the spiritual answer. Sometimes it's, Hey, what, what song is also in this key so we can just <laughs> flow into it. Yeah. Um, but I, it's really, it's, I think because we're family, we can do that. Like yeah. it just works. Whereas I, I always try to act like I'm a super prepared person when I'm around all these people because I know that there's so much better and I don't want to be the, <laughs> the, the dork. <laughs> yeah. How, how do you how do you see your role? You know, you're on the worship platform. You're you're leading worship. You, you've got your worship team behind you and your choir. How, how do you visualize the process of worship? You know, you're the worship team. You've got the congregation. 
I, I've got certain things in my mind that work for me. I, I kind of see, I kind of see everybody, worship pastor, worship leader, worship team, booth. I see the crowd as all an extension of the worship team with, with simply Christ as the audience. Mm -hmm. I know it, the, the room looks like we have people sitting and they're watching a platform and we're leading, we're, we're singing before them and we let them sing along. Yeah. But technically we're kind of, as a worship leader, you're not just leading the platform, you're leading the whole yeah. room. Well, in the scripture, I think that would back that up is the scripture. He said it where he said, if I be lifted up, oh, that's good. I will draw. And I have been taught at worship conferences my whole life. We need to set the table. We need to prepare, you know, the platform for the Lord. And it's like, and we need to bring people to him. And that scripture is counterintuitive to that, where if going back to the worship thing, if I'm lifting him up, he will draw. Yeah. He yeah. will take care of getting, and, and I think, I think it in a way it relieves you of kind of the responsibility of having to, you know, look out and see if they are responding and all that. Right. Like if you are genuinely, and I, I find this a lot, everybody, I jokes because I, I will cry. I cry. If I'm singing a song, I'll start, I, I can't get through the song. I Last night I was sending him a clip of a song on a voice memo. And I was playing and I started, I'm like, I can't, like I'm sending him a reference and I'm crying, singing the song, <laughs> but I have had people. And, and it's just because when I, when I really think of, I remember the first time I, I sang reckless love and, and the line, when I was your foe, still your love fought for me. Mm. And I sang that. And I just thought of the times <clears throat> when I am in direct opposition to his will yeah he and still he fought for still, he has still fought for us you know when i've sang king of my heart and i'm gonna betray him again right. and he's still gonna fight for me right i, I mm. remember singing mm -hmm. king of my heart for the first time and the lord spoke to me immediately and said no i'm not Ooh, i'm not the king of your you're heart. singing something i'm not right now and i had to i literally just stopped my mom looked at me like why is he stopping i i couldn't sing it but in that moment I, the lord just de destroyed me yeah <laughs> and and r just wrecked the entire thing. But I had someone come after, up afterwards and say, your vulnerability before the Lord started what happened today. Mm -hmm. Like the spirit moved and people felt like they could break. And so I, yep. that's why if he's truly lifted up, if I'm destroyed and somebody said this one time, and I'm sorry, I, I get on these sermons. Somebody was sitting in my barber shop chair and there's a window at the front and he looked out, he said, what do you see out there? And I said, ah, I, you know, I see trees. I see, you know, the other side, there's the Miner's Memorial, all that. He said, it's interesting you didn't say you saw a window. He said, you saw through the window. The window's in front of all that. He said, it's interesting you didn't say that. He said, too many times we as worship leaders, as ministers, as preachers, whatever you are in the kingdom of God, you try to build this painting of who Jesus is, your own mm -hmm. interpretation. And he said, our job is to be a window that they don't even see you. Right. They see what's on the other side. They're passing mm -hmm. through. You're just leading a group to a yeah. place. And they see Toward him. Toward the Shekinah. Yeah. yeah. And so to me, the most effective I ever am is when I am broken before the Lord. Yeah. And so. Um, vulnerability. We've heard <clears throat> vulnerability so much in this worship. I would ministry. say that same thing hangs true for me. I mean, I feel like the most powerful worship. Mm -hmm. I've ever led is when I'm just a mess. Well, yeah. 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 And, and what, what I yeah. experienced with Ben that's been great for the years is Ben just worships the Lord himself. And then he lets us kind of jump in with him. Yeah. And before long, we're all worshiping his God. Mm -hmm. And, and we honestly, we lose Ben in the process, Yeah, which is what he's you one really, of the best at this. That, Cause yeah. he just yeah. worships. Yeah. And that, what was great worshiping with Ben during COVID, we had nobody in the room. It was just as fine for him as if the room's full. And that's what I loved about that. And that's, yeah. I think it, he, really that was part of the key for us being successful with our COVID time when we went on TV and we were by ourselves yeah. just to have him lead worship. Mm -hmm. He could get God's heart. I mean, he, he listens to Ben. I, I know that in the morning when I'm prayer walking and I think that's a powerful yeah. thing because when you empty yourself out, God goes, somebody mm -hmm. just poured themselves out to me authentically. Yeah. And then I think other people begin to see that and they start thinking, Maybe I need to empty a little bit. Now, people can hold back. They may not come to the level you want, but I think our goal is that they would do the same. Right. Yeah. 
Yeah. That vulnerability. I if if I'm destroyed, I that we'll have to get the text of that. I my mentor. I, if I be lifted up, I'll draw him in and me. I I've sung that. I mean, there's a, there's an old chorus on that. You know. Yeah. You know. You know. We we used to sing that marching down through the street of New Orleans when we're preaching the gospel in the street. Yeah. You know. There's an old hymn for that. It's right out of the text. But if we lift him up, people will be drawn to him. That, yeah. I think it's a great way to put that. Let me ask you this question: When, when you're when you're when, on on the platform when you're when you're putting your worship leadership, your development, you, one of the roles I think of a worship leader is to bring spiritual growth and maturity to the team around them, whether yes. it be your booth team, whether it be your platform team. What what what, what are you guys are doing? I know you guys are a little more of a family base there. Is there some intentionality in your work of developing maturity and growth amongst your worship? Yeah. Team? Um, I, you know, one, one of the biggest things that's been, which has been very special is anytime we have a rehearsal, mom always stops at the end and she'll always challenge us to um to what does this song mean to you she makes it and she makes people talk about it like what is this you know she taught me that a long time ago she said dustin don't ever sing a song that you can't sing you know like don't king of my heart don't lie you know um and and she'll do that and she'll spark these discussions and lit and and sometimes it will be i remember there was a time there's a, a guy in our church that was singing and he told us this later he there was a song he, and he's he he does not like pre, like contemporary christian music he's all gospel all day long and so he it was a song that I think he particularly made fun of. You know, he would joke around about. It. I th- actually think it was "Lion and the Lamb." He just hates the song, and um, but and we were doing it a lot, you know. And he, um, mom said, "What do you guys think?" And he asked him, "What What does this mean to you?" And when he had to answer that, he he, he kind of he started getting you know choked up and started answering that question. And that song became real. I mean, he he said that that song became real for me. Like, right. even though I don't like the style, it right. became real. So, oh, that's that's something. Um, and I I think you know, just being together. There's we when when we had when we do very rarely. The I used to look forward when I was a kid to having choir practice on Tuesday nights. When we used to have that because it was such a fun, like, just. It was just so fun mm-hmm. and so like we're just spending time together, loving. It goes back to that loving each other, like mm-hmm. just um, giving people an opportunity to to lead in those little ways together with your peers, with your people. I, you know, I don't. I, it's it's hard, you know, to. I'm trying to think of any, a, a good answer, but like really just being together and allowing people a voice. Yeah. Um, because, you know, like there's been times that maybe someone that never gets a solo, but they can speak something in a choir practice. Right. That, giving, giving people opportunities to lead and shine. Yeah. And that, that kind of thing. Um, then they, when they sing that, uh, you know, I've, I've spoke things in a song, you know, before a song and then, I wasn't leading that song, but when we sang it, it's it, like, I felt like I brought something to that. And mm-hmm. so just, just lifting people up and loving them and allowing them to be good at their gift or be free in their gift, whatever mm-hmm. that is. Yeah. And, and I, there's, and as I asked that question about leadership on the platform and developing growth and maturity, you have that role. And then you turn around and as a worship leader, you also are the leader of the congregation in worship and yeah. bringing them along. If, if you had a chance, one of our goals in this episode is if you, you're, you're getting a chance to speak to people listening that, that sit in churches, they come to church and, and you know, they want to maybe be devastated. They want to be vulnerable. They want to get more, but they've just never heard it like that. They've never been told like that. They, they thought, well, I, I, you know, a lot of our church today is driven with a consumer mentality. We, we did, I don't think we meant to put that in there, but it's really in there today. Uh, the concept of spectator, because the, the, even the way the rooms are orientated, is all wrong. You know, you've got a, a platform, which looks like a stage and you got a crowd that looks yep. like an audience yep. and you know, they're here to perform and you've got a ticket and you're like at the civic center going to see a concert, you know, you know, and if we, we, you throw out the coffee shop, you've got a concession stand. So it all of a sudden feels like you've got a performance former you've got a spectator some of that's engineered and so in your mind you can go man i came here to get this and you know i hope it gets over on time because chicken's after this and i don't want to get the old chicken or the new chicken i want the fresh chicken yeah and so you can show up 
already ready to leave before you started. You know what I'm saying? And you don't mean to, but we've created some sense of culture that says, well, I hope, I hope he's not going to be long or if so-and-so is not preaching today. I'm already disappointed. So you came for the preacher or you came for the show, but you forgot that what you really came for was honestly to empty the water bucket out before the Lord yeah. and see what the Lord could do for you. And you, before you maybe even heard the preacher, you're like, well, well, Jordan's preaching today. It's not brother Terry, you know, and, but you don't know. God may have the, it's like you said, my son has had some words that, that, that just touched my life. I've had people that I've never expected to preach touch my life. You just don't know who's going to touch you because right. the Holy ghost is in charge of that. Not true. any preacher. Yeah. So, you know, if a mule can speak to us in the Bible, so yeah. can anybody in movie. It's are you ready to receive though? Yeah. Because you know the, the, the one parable, stony ground, uh, rocky ground, path travel ground, where the seed took was in good ground. Yeah. Honestly, you control a lot of whether your ground's going to be good. Yeah. You really do. You can decide. So I guess my question would be, if you were to be able to coach for a minute, and take off the mic, take off the earbuds, you know, come out of the click track, and, and go. Congregation, I, if I could just tell you these two or three things that you're doing, things that you're being distracted by, or if I could just give you three or four pointers to help you get with us on this worship platform, I think God could get in you and he could put something in that bowl. What would be those coaching points yeah. that you would help? Two or three, four or five, no more. But g give me those top things that you think mm -hmm. would improve the quality of worship yeah. amongst people in the pew. Well, I always say my model of proper worship is Isaiah 6. It starts out where he said, and I saw the, in the year that King Uzziah died. So it's a terrible year. It's a lot of stuff. A lot of distractions are happening. Mm -hmm. And, you know, a lot of people are coming into the service with a lot of distractions. Right. But he took time to see the Lord. And it goes on to say, and the train of the Lord the train of the Lord filled, filled the, the temple, temple with glory. Yeah. It's a powerful, right. powerful. But if he didn't stop to see that, he would have missed it. Mm -hmm. So the that was his responsibility. I just have to take time to see it. And then from that, you have a nat when you take time to see the Lord, you know, talking about posturing yourself to be destroyed, that's been the theme. You don't even have to. Like when I when he saw the Lord. It drove him to his knees to say, woe is me. I'm a man of unclean lips. He immediately felt destroyed oh, by the very presence, by of, the very presence of, the, of the Lord. Yeah. And then after that, the Lord said, well, who am I going to send? And he was able to say, send me. That is the, yeah. that, that's like the order. So, but, but he saw that, then he was destroyed. I think one of the things you've been arguing is that if I can bring that sooner, then God could actually start sooner. I mean, he, they had to be devastated <laughs> yeah. there to get that to happen. Yeah. What if you brought that attitude? Right. And that's, if you can get people to, I'm a man of unclean lips. Right. Here I am, Lord. Why? Yeah. Yeah. If you can get people coming into the service saying, you know, somehow I, I want to, I, I really want to see him. I mean, honestly, the best way, you know, if, if people... We're not supposed to be people that just come in on Sundays and that's when our spiritual meter starts. You know, if, if people are praying and reading their Bible every day, as we've learned in every Sunday school and every message that's ever been preached, then we, this would be no problem. We just jump right in. Right. But realistically, and even for me, um, so it's getting them to stop. It, Francis Chan used to do this thing where he, he would, when he would go to pray, he would be silent. And he, he some and he said at some conference sometime he said people ask me why I do that he said because I'm taking time to actually envision who I'm talking to that's great because it's so easy to just walk in and be like oh hey God thank you for and you're still thinking of the chicken that you got on the grill or wherever I'm not a cooker so wherever you put chicken um, <laughs> but like you could be thinking about that but he said I take time to wrap my brain around who I'm talking to. So if, some, if somebody were to have that yeah. image, I mean, what a powerful image to come into church, you've taken time and you sit down and your first image is you dream of the train of the Lord filling yeah. the temple with glory that day. Right. If you started your day like that by mm -hmm. emptying yourself out, what a powerful right. thing. And practically what we do at West Monroe, and this maybe this is more practical, we start right after our morning lesson time, we have prayer, the whole church, everybody comes to the front and we pray and we spend time, everybody praying, everybody's praying out loud. It's very, um, it's just, 
it's it's powerful. And then 15 minutes before the service, we people can still pray, but we make it intentional. We don't have a four year, which is is a it's hard because you know you're like we need to pray, and then we also need to greet people, and so we have greeters there the whole time. But it's like then we make an effort to greet people and bring them in. But most of the time, people walk into prayer. They walk into prayer. They walk into prayer, and because of that, they're see like. The goal is is not to make them feel uncomfortable, and and that's why we we, we have to also do our part, and make sure they feel welcome right. when right. they come in. But when they come in, there's you know at least 10, 15 minutes where they're feeling the presence of God. So then when the first song starts, it's it's already like that. They've they've already the flesh has already been you know. I guess dealt with a little bit. Mm -hmm. And so that's a practical way. That's what, that's how we start every service. And, um, we try, you know, try to do that. The other thing for me and I'm bad, this is, this is one of my biggest struggles, but, um, and my mom's always on me. She said, Dustin, get off the platform and go greet people. Go talk to them. Like Mm -hmm. your, your, your tracks, they may not be warped correctly, but forget about it. Get off the piano. Go talk to him before that service. Because yeah. if I greet you and I'm like, I am so glad to have you yeah, here. Yeah, it means something. From the platform when I, and worship right, team. When I'm singing later and I look them in the eyes, they're going to be like, yeah, you do care. You yeah. came off your post to talk yeah. to me. Mm-hmm. That's that guy that welcomed me. And so I think that there is a, um, it's loving God and loving people. <laughs> Yeah, there it, needs to be an invasion almost. Yeah, I, I no, I, I I think it's very well said to take the time. I, I was thinking as you were talking about this as, as we look at this, that the concept today of people coming to church, so many people come to consume, they come to, to, to hit a notch in the week, the bucket list thing for the week. We've got that. I think the key to seeing revival in church is to change that mindset to people are coming to give themselves out, to empty themselves, and yeah. helping people see that when you step into the door of the church, I, I guess in some ways, time is our time is precious. It's you know, we only have so many days on this earth, and then we go to be with God. So, if we're going to really empty ourselves out, the most best thing we could give God is our time, yeah, and say the time is really yours. And so, whether I'm here an hour or four hours, when I walk in these doors, I am yours mm-hmm. for whatever time that'll be. Yes, yeah. it's, it's that's complete paradigm shift from the normal. It mentality. is absolutely. It is it's like, absolutely like God. I'm not. I'm not here for me. And it's yeah. tough like because a lot of our church, a, a lot of our churches have a nine o'clock, and then in eleven o'clock we got to have another one. I've seen great revivals where mm-hmm. they've talked about those churches like that. I've got some great examples of where things would happen, like at the the Brownsville church where they had you know nine o'clock church, but the Holy Ghost came in that church, and then people came at eleven and they were still laid out, and yeah. they came at twelve, they're still laid out. There's three services are all consumed in yeah. one, nobody could leave. You know, <laughs> we need to have more of that happening, yeah. Yeah. and I understand we need to get other people in and out, and they need to have that experience, but it's not the experience they need to have him. Right. And whatever that looks like, it could be yeah. a continuation of what happened. Somehow or another, it doesn't work with our program nature because we've got our guide on TV that says at seven, this happens at eight, this happens. Yeah. And, yeah. And so we, we've we got to crucify mm. more of that these days because used to be, we used to be a little more flexible because there was nothing to do on Sunday. There was almost no restaurants open. You you couldn't go gamble. You couldn't go do this. You couldn't go do that. Everybody sand. went to church. Everybody went to church. And if you yeah. best, you might get chicken at one place and yeah. then you go back to church at night and there were blue laws you couldn't shop anywhere yeah now sunday i mean kids are doing their sports on sunday right they're doing this on sunday there's competition on sunday home menards mm-hmm. has got uh, selling stuff to do your lawn yeah. you know there's so much and so when you walk into church if you could figure out how to empty yourself destroy your clock and i, I hate to say this that would be precious to start with yeah. Well, and I think going back to the coming off the platform as a worship leader, by me walking up to you and saying, I'm so glad you're here and, and, and talking to you and letting you know that we're the body of Christ. You are whatever part of the body you are. If you weren't here today, it throws everything off. Yeah. And I need to make you feel like yeah. you you are here with purpose. And I'm I'm I I'm thankful you're here. I recognize that in you. So then they're like, oh, well, I have a responsibility to bring myself self and be and, and to be vulnerable and re- yeah. to be vulnerable and ready. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, in the day of the iPhone and the Android phone, you know, I, I hate to tell you, you know, put it in airplane mode. 
Turn it off. Yeah. You know, I, I think we may have to start doing more of that. You know, I, I want people when we come in here, we want people to share social media out because we do broadcasts. And so I'll tell people if you're here, go ahead and share the service out. But I think when I'm going to start telling people to share the service out, then put your phone in airplane mode. Yeah. You know, get it out there for those that couldn't be here so they can experience. Right. Do that invitation. And then I, I've gotten to where I do that a lot at night. If, if somebody's not sick or dying in the family or in the church, I, I most nights now when I get to that bedtime, because I, I stay up to 12, 30, 1 o'clock, I'm a late person, I put my phone in airplane mode. Mm -hmm. so, it just, well, so you can sleep and rest. Mm -hmm. But we also have to put our phone in airplane mode to give God opportunity to do something amazing in us. Yeah. Yeah, I grew up. I grew up in the last part of the era where you didn't have a phone, so yeah. you can't say you can't do that. You know, people are like, well, what happens? What happened? People go crazy. Years ago? I, my well, kids go know? crazy. Yeah. They start calling her phone, their yeah. phone, that phone. They think you were abducted. But and you're <laughs> preaching to me, so I'm not trying Aliens. to be. A, I, you know, so so we we all well, but we've got to learn how to give God back that time and be devastated. When you're devastated, I've been devastated when yeah. when you've had the loss of a loved one, when you've had a loss of thing, when you, when you the phone disappears then anyway. Yeah. You could care less about talking to somebody. We've got to get at that mode when we come into worship and just be hunger for yeah. God and want to love the people. You know, when you've lost something and you've been devastated, you'll hug on everybody in the room, yeah. right? Let's love the people in the room and let's go to the yeah. throne. It, it, yeah, just I, I just want to say I feel like like no one no church I've ever been in gets like the hunger and the just the desire to see God like West Monroe. They do their, a great job. Their pre-service prayer is a service. Is a service. I mean, itself. it's like it's one of the most powerful rooms I've that. ever sat in. Yeah. Is their pre-service prayer? There's such room. an annoying there. Yeah. It's like. I don't, I don't, I didn't want to leave this room and now we have to go do a whole, a whole service. Yeah. You know, I, yeah. 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 I, I want to say one more scripture. I know we're long on time. No, no, you're good. You're, um, good. you're good. And I, 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 this is why it's bad coming off the cuff. Cause I don't, no. I'm going to quote it wrong. And I don't even remember the thing, but Nathan, um, McGee, uh, he shared this once on Facebook and he, and this is, it impacted me so much. We talking. there's a scripture where Paul is writing to one of the churches and he talked about them being, he said, you should be encouraged because of my imprisonment. And he, and he, he goes on to talk about, he said, you should be encouraged because my desire is for you. And if you read into that, he's sitting in prison writing to these people. And when I, when Nathan posted the description, and we talked for hours about it afterwards. I said, you don't even realize the significance of this because Paul is literally saying, I'm chained in prison. Mm -hmm. I've been beaten. You know, there's, I'm rotting in a jail cell, sickness, all these things. Like physically, I am being destroyed. Right. I have nothing. But because of that, you should be encouraged because now I can hear from the spirit like I and never And I'm praying could. for you and I'm going to write right. to you <laughs> letters that will be preserved that we right. that, think of the work he did in that prison time. Yeah. It's changing. And, and, and it, and it couldn't have been done if his flesh was intact. He sent other people to deliver those messages that groomed Titus and Timothy and all it's what can come yeah. out of a moment like that's powerful. Yeah. And so I think, and obviously, you know, I, not to encourage everyone to just go throw themselves in prison for a while, right, but right. you know, like getting to the point, whatever that takes, whatever you fasting, you know, uh, taking time to consecrate yourself. Um, it's amazing what happens out of that, you know, like denying yourself. Mm. I mean, I, it's just the key. And I, I always go back to it because it's my biggest struggle, but it's, I mean, Again, back to the garden. So part part of that you would advise somebody is is taking the time to to, to deny, consecrate yourself, getting ready to come in. That seems like yeah. a real key uh, for you guys that, that that to take the time to posture yourself and get ready. Let me ask you one more question. Then then I've got a wrap up question here. Um, what is your heart? How, how how do you work? It sounds like this. You guys at West Monroe, you're doing the prayer time, so you people are coming in pretty sharp. The knives are pretty. The sword is getting ready. But but how do you? How would you coach people out there to move out of the consumer spectator mode? What would you say to a brother or sister out there that comes to church saying, "Well, I wonder what I'm going to get today. I wonder if the word's going to be worth coming today. Should I've I should have guarded." What, how do you move people? What would you suggest to move people from spectator to participant? You know what I mean? Well, and again, I. I, I mean, I think it goes back to realistically, you know, that time before service, as I said, going to them and expressing how important they are to being there. Yeah. 
Because if you feel the importance, if I feel like I am necessary, I'm going to be more active. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like if you're just, if you're just a guest and you know, you're just, you know, you're there to see the show. Like, um, you know, I, I think if I, if I were saying it and you're listening to this right now, it's, it is, it's taking time to realize how important you are to the kingdom of God yeah. and how important you are to the person sitting next to you in service. There have been times where I've been, wa I've wanted to just let loose in worship and just sob and raise my hands. And the person next to me is just sitting there and I'm embarrassed and I don't want to, I don't want to do that because you know, I, because of the person sitting next to me, mm -hmm. you have a responsibility now obviously i i'm i'm talking to church people here right. <laughs> so but like we do i have the responsibility to not hinder and that's why it's like i'm so glad you're here because like i i've went up to people in my church and said i just love your worship i just love it and i mean it i'm not just blowing smoke but what that also does is encourages them to keep doing it and so that the person sitting next to him that doesn't know anything, like it gives them like, it's okay here. It's okay here to just settle down. Like mm -hmm. you don't have to be, you don't have to just sit there and be rigid and you know, and a lot of times uh, it's a Pentecostal church. They're probably scared to death anyway, but <laughs> um, you know what I mean? Like the goal is like, let's, let's, I want to encourage those in the body to, to know like, your worship is so important. Mm -hmm. And so if you withhold it and it's easy to do, there's sometimes I don't feel like it, right. but the person next to me needs it. There's times I don't feel like singing. Uh, there's times that I don't. And I, and again, I'm not perfect at this, but there's times where if I don't do it, you know, and, and yeah, there's scripture that, you know, if we don't praise him, the rocks will cry out. But if there, if Paul didn't do what he did, where would have that new where would the New Testament church be? That's right. Mm -hmm. He had to go through what he went through. He had to do all that he did, and we, you know, we we have we. It's it's a responsibility for us, but it's a blessing. Like I get to bring my offering, yeah. And if I can realize like what I have is as you know as filthy rags as it is, it is without it. God can't receive glory. He needs brokenness to fix. But I, I think coming you know? back, coming around circle to wrap this up, if we go back to your opening text, if I be lifted up, I will draw all people to me. Right. We have a responsibility, whether we're on the platform or whether we're in the pew as a worship leader. Yeah. We're all worship leaders looking to God. If we will lift up the name of Christ, right. whether we're filthy rags that day or not. Yeah. It, it doesn't say we have to be clean. It just says that lifting itself will draw yeah. people. Yeah. And so maybe I don't get closer today, but I'm responsible to help my brother or sister get closer. Yeah. If we could care, bear ye one another's burdens, the Bible says, yeah. and so fulfill the law of Christ. Amen. What's the law of Christ? It's the good news. Yeah. You know, so, so it doesn't really matter how we feel. If you've devastated, you're devastated. Yeah. So, so it, it maybe maybe you're there to this Sunday. You're there this Wednesday. You're not there for yourself. You're there because somebody sitting next to you, somebody in front of you, behind you, it needs a word. Right. And you just your goal there is to lift that up and maybe mm -hmm. maybe pass it back. You almost like when you go to a good concert and you know you, you ever see like the star on the yeah. stage? They fall off the stage <laughs> and people just pass them out. Yeah. What we need to do is see Jesus is on the stage, and we need to let Jesus' body right. surf our congregations. Yeah. And we need to hand him around like the beach balls that are bounced around. You know, <laughs> yeah. maybe I'm not into this, but you know, I've been in places when they do those beach ball things and I can't stand it, you know? And then it comes and best says, you gotta hit it. You gotta hit it. Cause then you realize I don't want to be the one that kills this thing. Right. So you hit it and you know what happens? You start getting into it. Oh yeah. Where'd that, where'd that thing go? You know, yeah. you get, you become connected. Yeah. You, you get invested. Right. I think worship is about us risking something and then seeing how God will get us invested. It's amazing. Amen. Last question. This is our pastor's hey, inquiry. I've go ahead, just go ahead, go ahead, never go ahead. heard anybody talk about body surfing Jesus. That's real good. <laughs> I, just, I love I'm just that. imagining Jesus yeah. at Bonnaroo. What yeah. yeah. If I, if Jesus I, is like, woo! If I ever write a commentary, if I ever write a commentary, I'm going to find a scripture to add that to. I, I can do that. I can do that. You can help me. Chatter yeah. of a book. I love that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's riding on a cloud, that yeah. type of thing, you know. <laughs>
<laughs> He's body surfing. I love it. Jesus body surf. Oh, gosh. Yeah. If I be lifted up, I'll draw that. Yeah. I, that's that's a body surfing text. Yeah. No. I think that's the body <laughs> surfing is. text right there. We have it. Is. We, we, we got to get the reference for that. I, I think that's the message translation. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. The. Uh, <laughs> Hey, last question. It's just a small question. Do, do, do you, do you, when you're leading worship and stuff, do you often have a massive battle with, with your, with your brother or your dad about who's going to get the most time and who's, who's, <laughs> who's really in control of this service? How, how do y'all handle that tension of having that, that, that big worship leader ego and you've got that big preaching ego? How do y'all manage those things? Because I, I'm losing the battle here. At Community we Faith fight Church. it. We they, fight hard every week. I was going to say, they all just know I take the most time. <laughs> <laughs> No. You've established that, right? <laughs> no, it's, that's so funny. What? Well, because it's it's <laughs> it's our we call this our senior pastors inquiry. If, if Brother Darren Venus, if you're watching this, you're the problem. <laughs> you're, you're the problem. Yeah. I love that transfer the, the responsibility. Mm. Somebody no, else um, is the problem. just like I, Jesus transferred the debt of our sin. Yeah, that's right. It's dad is dad is super does dad cut his stuff do you see him start going i'm ripping pages out of my notes i'm done with that he, the boy's destroying a good message today or do you just see him go I'm, it's gonna be long today nobody's no, getting nothing to eat today that's that's that would be more me yeah. <laughs> dad is extremely there have been times where like god moves and i still think like i'm still ready to hear the word and probably the rest of the church like we're ready and he's like I'm going to, I'm, I'm not going to preach after that. I'm going to let y'all go. And, and it's like, I'm thinking your dad's a smarter and more generous pastor than just, I am. I make he, him pay. He is like, <laughs> I bleed him out, you know, times, but yeah, he's, he is. That's why your dad's done so well for so long. He, he allows people a lot of rope. I'll say that. I appreciate that. I do yeah. too. I you do, do too. I do too. You a hundred percent. I do okay. Yeah. I do okay. Yeah. Yeah. I shred stuff. I shred, <laughs> I shredded my sermon last week. I got halfway through. Halfway <laughs> through. Yeah. I, I cut it. Now that's part because I went on a binge myself. Mm -hmm. But I blame that binge on Ben. The worship was so good here. You the watched the came. end of that service. Didn't I did. You? Yeah. I just went crazy on it. I, I didn't did. get halfway through what I planned to do. So because yeah. the Lord wrecked me in the middle of it, and the, it was the banana nut bread. And I got people made me more bread this week, so I could have for this Sunday. Mm. What do you? think about that people brought me they, new bread they liked it they brought That's me bread awesome. so, hilarious. no 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 i got a whole new loaf yet last night so i'm gonna start eating that on friday and i got the holy ghost bread That's it's the bread of manna baby <laughs> Pastor, jesus you need more bread i'm gonna bring it i'm gonna make mm. sure you get a little bit beforehand too <laughs> yeah give us this day our yeah, daily, daily bread yeah bread. with some banana in it yeah yeah praise god hey thank you for sharing that i i it's not a controversy here really we just we just but it is. No, a, but yeah, there are churches when the choir director and the pastor have had death battles. Yeah. You know, I mean, we I can did, tell you. There's, I, we have, dad. There have been times being father son, where it's there because he's the kind. We'll be in the middle at the end of a service and we'll be singing something and he'll just get up. He touched me and I have to shift and I think he's grabbing control, baby. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah, and, yeah, that's good. And uh, and there's times where I'm like, God, Dad, like. <laughs> You like, yeah. You like, I'm like scrambling, and my computer hit stop. Like, uh, you just blow, but, up, you just blow up the click track. I love but we it. all know. I mean, he doesn't do that often. So when he does, something's important. It's his. Yeah. And we're yeah. we we. I appreciate Ben. Anytime the Lord's put something on my heart and I hit the platform, you know, he, he yields very quickly. Yeah. Or I love it we, when we you find, do that. We find a place to jump in and. And sometimes I sometimes I blow them up. I I used to do that when Nathan was here. I just blow Nathan up. It blew Nathan up so bad for a while. I, for for years I did it for Nathan on a regular basis because he it was you know, he he handled it so well and he got yeah. better and better at it. But because 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 Nathan's very linear back in those days, very linear. Yeah. So I jump in there and I just see him scrambling. Like, I need you to go back into the bridge and you can just see the the scripture him rolling. Like how are we going to do that? You know. Oh, I can see it. Now. And and Luke is Luke yeah. is like, don't worry, Nathan. I got this. I got this. We can handle yeah. this. It's not a problem. And I, uh, I, I, back in the day, I'd see I'd see josh talking him down lucas and uh, nathan it's okay just, uh, we'll do this we'll do this josh should be over josh used to be in the microphone it'll be okay he, we'll just call that stage not, therapy yes, I don't it's back in the day and, 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 and to be honest with you nathan i did it a lot of times just to develop you be honest with you it was just one of, it was a personal work and then been like you don't come up enough for me i said yeah. i don't need to I said, in a sense, because really, really, I, I didn't, I don't need just to stimulate because yeah. when we're there and and then, gosh, I've seen Nathan just explode. I mean, yeah, what, what a powerful worship that, leader. He's when he led at that last, the first Cedar Sessions we did it's back amazing. in November, it was like, yeah, because you know, you stretch, hey, something. I take credit. The boy got stretched early yeah. on, you yeah. know, but well, and he's taught me so many, like just yeah. in our conversations yeah. about, 
a little being a little more linear. Like right. he's like he is somebody that, and I'm that's like, a good thing. You need to be thing. linear. You need to be. And then I love the fact now I, I find myself coming up more these days because the anointing is so strong that I I'm hearing God differently these days. So it, it comes and goes and yeah. ebbs and flows, but but it's just great. I thank you so much. Uh, this is. We're going to be back in the third. It's going to be great. Uh, I, this has been as dynamic. I'm sorry, the people. I'm sorry this has been long, but uh, what do you expect? West Monroe <laughs> Apostolic yeah, You got to put a console in here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You see that they only have one service on Sunday. There's no time for a second one. Yeah. Yeah. You come in early. Come. Hey, if you come to their church, don't come at 10:30. Come at about 10:15, 10:10. 10, 10, 10. Get in the prayer, and then they'll let you catch up and visit people. Just come yeah. in praying. Come in to empty yourself. They will love on you. I promise you that. You will get phenomenal worship. You're going to get a phenomenal message. It doesn't matter which one's in the pulpit. They can all bring it. Trust me. They're all born out of the same loaf. That's for sure. <laughs> you know what I mean? I mean, they go old school, new school. Extra banana bread. Extra banana bread there. <laughs> I, am, I have never heard that. I am honored. I mean, we, we all have I am honored to banana call, bread. <laughs> I am honored to call them my, my friends in the Lord. And uh, it's been it's been great having you. We're going to have uh, uh, Dustin back for part nine. It'll be the third part of his sub-series. We'll wrap that up we'll have him back here uh, real soon here we'll probably get something to eat maybe even do another one of these before long so check it out on the dock with pastor troy you can find us at on the dock.org email us for more information info at on the dock.org check out our eight different platforms make sure you get on youtube subscribe hit like we want lots of youtube people itunes spotify and all those other ones over there and reach out to us on our social media sites there facebook instagram twitter telegram and getter go get a getter account they're so great we want to start using their video accounts so we'll do that very very soon so get set up when you find it hit subscribe hit like notify tell others about it like it's a cult following we're not cult but we'd like a following and then we'd love to have you as a patreon partner find out what patreon is and how you could be a partner or sponsor to the program if you can't find another church home or you just can't stand to pray 15 minutes before service you just don't want to be have all that holiness in you come out come down to community faith church we'll get around to prayer eventually yeah, we have a great we have a we have a great prayer team here as well, and we'll get you we'll get you laid out too. We we, we start our so your people show up to pray. Our people we have to get two songs in, but we're like L.A. Dodgers fans. They kind of get about the third <laughs> inning they show up. So yeah, we'd have to start praying. At 15, we we are, we start our prayer fifteen minutes in. Our people are like parking the car. They're still getting their hair fixed and all that stuff. So but we'd love to have you. Ten o'clock on Sundays we have a coftv.com presence. Check out our embedded viewer. You can also watch us live stream us. Check us out. But we really want you to come out live and be a part of our church. Hey, guess what? We have gone on each of these worship leaders. Uh, Lucas has gone in the studio. We've recorded an incredible piece of their worship presence. And as we're focusing on worship leaders of Southern Illinois, as we wrap up this episode, as I say goodbye till the next episode, we want you to get ready to just sit down and get with the Lord. We actually want you to empty yourself, get vulnerable, devastate, pull off the road right now. If you're listening, just, just find a place, hit pause, park for a second. If you're at home, you should put your phone on airplane mode. Okay. Turn the TV off. You don't need to multitask. We want you just to sit for a moment and enjoy the worship movement. There's going to be a movement here as Dustin Griffith shares with you the heart of worship for him. Get in that and enjoy that. We'll see you back on the next podcast at On The Dock. We love you. Thank, thank you, guys. Thank hey, you guys thank so you. much. Yeah. Enjoy the worship. Good. My 
Oh, oh, oh. 